Hi, I'm Rob and this is Gems of War. In this video I'm showing an alternative team for the Hunting the Leocorn event and this one's non-mythic. I was asked to do a non-mythic team so I'm going to show you one here and this is probably a thing I'll take up from now on. Just a good idea to show a powerful team which can decimate these events in the future and a non-mythic version at the same time. So as ever, before you get going on this, make sure you have the medal equipped because it makes a big difference if you've got a couple of the um, shop purchases for the event you'll gain some badges and medals and make sure that's equipped there like that and it is now we can go back to the actual event hunting the leocorn right and also if um you gain if you gain the first three tiers from the shop it really does make a difference and helps speed it all up and make it much more winnable as well right onto the team itself i'll do a lower level one at first Gone for Summer's Fury. This deals a bunch of damage to all enemies. And remember, if you've got that boost on the event, that's going to be magnified, so that will make a big difference. And we create red gems as well, which is good. Indrajit deals a bunch of damage to four different enemies, so that's pretty good. And is boosted by red and purple gems on the board. As well as that, there's a pretty cool third trait the Curse and Burn, a random enemy. When matching four or more gems. Hellclaw Mage is going to be one of our generators to all the team. Creates nine red gems and nine purple gems and curses and burns the first enemy. Which is pretty cool. So basically these two, Hellclaw Mage and Summer's Fury, are going to charge Indrajit and Sekma pretty well. And Sekma is pretty powerful as well. She gains two magic on red gems which we'll be doing often and transforms blue gems to skulls and brown gems to yellow and deals 40, in my case 40 damage to an enemy boosted by all other allies magic that can one shot many high level opponents really easily right and let's just take what we've gone f check what we've gone for on the banners that's not correct we don't want that that's this is what I'm not, because i haven't actually done this yet so um i have to make this up on the fly, find something that's good. We'll press that initially because that's quite good. But that's even better and that is ideal. And we'll go for that. Let's check the warden is correct. It doesn't initially sound like it would be the right thing to do. So I want a 50% start really. I was originally thinking that um, Sun Spear would be, th would be good for this because we get lots of red. But it doesn't have a... I'm pretty sure it doesn't have a fast start. No. Right, I want a fast start on this. So uh, I, I am going to go... Even though it seems odd, I think I might go Frost Mage. Can we get to free someone at the start of our turn? 25% chance. Free somebody at the start guaranteed for being immune. We get spell reduction, 50% mana start. Yeah, a lot to like about that. All right, I'm going to go with that. I am going to go for that. That will do. There may be one which you prefer more, but um, for me, what I want to do with this, it's completely fine. And it is nice to have a 50% start as well, especially with the um, bonus to red we get because a mana surge on red will instantly be able to cast Summer's Fury straight away. And we start with hardly red on the board. Wouldn't you just know it? Right. So this is going to be the theory. Try and get red or purple as quickly as possible. Now this is going to be a bunch of damage to four different enemies. I may actually switch those two around actually. That may actually work better with the mana generator higher up. This is not going to be as quick as the Mythic team, obviously. Ones with Uber Stand in it. Now this is going to create a load of gems, which hopefully we can benefit from, but we didn't. That's the only good thing about Sun Spear. It's going to be a slower start. But um, the fact that we're going to get a load of red all the time would really benefit this team. Now we cast this. Let's finish them all off. That wasn't too bad because that was a um, legendary battle and it was level 130, I think, something like that. This is all, like, remember, no mythics at all in this. 
Right, let's try a harder one. I am going to play around with this and change them to around. Because the idea is we get that going and then if that charges up and casts and charges these two up, this is where the main damage is going to come from. So no mythics. Always look for four matches if they're, if they're available as ever, because um, some of our benefits on our team, like that one there, Hellfire, curse and burn a random enemy when matching four or more gems is, is pretty useful. Now this will give, yeah, it's better now because we cast this one first and then we get a chance to charge everybody up who will do damage. And then we'll do our Summer's Fury. And then charge her again, which gives boost to everybody up again. Grab any extras. Now Sekma is ready to go. And that is blue to skulls and brown to yellow. So we've got blue to skulls there. So always do that if it's available. Good thing with Sekma is you can um, hit somebody with it first and then get the damage from the skulls after. So if somebody is dangerous but slightly out of, out of range, you can hit it on someone at the bottom there, say, do a ton of damage and still get the effect of the skulls, which is really cool. And she's ready to go again. So blue to skulls, brown to yellow. It's not quite a four match. It's only best to cast these sort of things when um, you've got a guaranteed four match. See if we get any luck there on the skulls. No, we've got a lot of skulls going on though, but I'll grab these anyway because we get to curse and burn the enemies. Right, we should be able to take out a couple of them. Even though we're not going to get a extra turn from this, we'll be able to take out two of them easy with this. Did lose one there. Oops, got a bit clumsy. See, that was the downside to taking a risk. It's generally best. We're going to still win easily enough. But um, don't always presume a victory is won just because they're down to the last opponent. It can go pear-shaped really, really quickly. We've got a couple of extra event sigils. So that's cool. I'll be able to show a couple more. Yeah, I think that worked better uh, with those two troops switched around like that. So Hellclaw Mage in second place. And Indrajit in third. Cast Summer's Fury as soon as it's ready to go. Try and get blue if we can now, because that's going to charge up everybody else. In this. And if you can't, just pick up more red. Let's give them a big old surge on purple there. That was a little unlucky. We generate some red gems, but no four matches. But now we can get going a bit. This is going to generate lots of red, lots of purple. And that was really unlucky again not to actually get charged. Oh look, one and two. They're going to be downed on the next round anyway. But hopefully it'll hit the other ones. Umineth. Start getting the mythic ones now. Yeah, we should breeze through these instantly when we get charged like that. If Summer's Fury. Just do these last two quickly and call it a day. And remember, if you found the video useful, it'd be cool if you liked and subscribed. It really does help because, as I said, I'll be doing. Um, on these event style ones, I'll be doing a powerful team, which is for the best troops available, or that I'll have anyway, that I can do from that. And also a non-mythic variant for the newer players who don't have as many troops yet. Bing bang bong. So yeah, cast some as few of you when it's there. Charge up Hellclaw Mage, cast that, 
and then when Indrajit is ready to go, just cast that troop, and then it's pretty pretty straightforward to be honest. And Sekma is the only one you, you really have to look out for when she's charged. What should we do here? We've got nearly got everybody charged, so um, we may as well just do a little bit of skull damage. In Indrajit. Summer's Fury got that charge very nicely. And Summer's Fury again. Now we cast Helichlor Mage. Summer's Fury will finish it off. If you don't have Summer's Fury, another weapon that will work pretty well is um, Fist of Heaven. May not be quite as fast. I'll just uh, edit that and show that with that instead. Oops. Oh, I'm not allowed to use it. Of course, yes, you can only have certain um, weapons, but what would we use if you didn't have Fist of Heaven? Um, there's loads, really. It's like, yeah. Oh, it is there. This would work pretty well. Because we explode 32 yellow gems, which we don't use, so it's, you know, like a no loss to them. We don't get the charge from them, of course, but if there's a load of yellow there, then it will charge up all the other troops really quickly. And we have a, a summon in there as well, so give this one a quick go, just out of interest. We'll change that quickly. Don't want minus, minus green there. That's not too bad. Let's see if there's any Think slightly better. I do. So if you don't have the summer's heaven, whatever it's called, then um, fist of heaven is a pretty decent alternative. So we're still looking for red first, because I'll get that charged up instantly. Then we'll explode those yellow, which is going to gain us mana, especially on the random drops afterwards. Then we still cast, cast Indrajit. Now we'll keep a look out for Sekma. Blue gems to skulls and brown to yellow. And we've got that there, so we'll cast her. We'll just give him a wallop. Take any bonus skull matches we get. Let's finish them off. The good thing about finishing a person off that's got um, a troop off that's got low, low health is when we cast a troop like this again that attacks four different random enemies, you're not actually effectively wasting one of those um, damages on a low level opponent that's nearly death anyway. So uh, we'll cast. Uh, weapon again to get nicely charged. Yes, yeah, working quite well with Fist of Heaven, but overall, I'd say I did prefer Summer's Fury, so that's the one to use if you do have it. But there's nothing wrong with this at the same time, I have to say. Last one. I do like the weapons that um, explode gems because it's just a really quick way of generating mana for the team. And it's a lot more reliable than the um, other ones that you have to change a certain colour to another colour or something like that because you often have to wait for that to work the amount of times that it just doesn't work in your favour is is unreal sometimes and you have to just wait and wait and wait and you've got someone who you want to cast but you just can't because it's just not, not going to line up and not going to do you any good. So a troop spell is no good if you can't cast it. 
Come on, give me lots of them colours. Right, now we've got Sekma. Blue to skulls, yellow to brown, nothing initially there, so we'll just do some good damage. Not enough yellow there to justify that, so we'll cast Hellclaw instead. Blue to skulls now is really good on Sekma. And that will do. Right, so there's the non-mythic team. And there it is. So uh, if you found the video useful or helpful, be cool if you liked and subscribed. But most of all, thanks for watching. See you again next time. Bye for now.